All right, we're on Facebook, and I want to just encourage our Facebook friends to, uh, hey, get some of your friends on here so we can they can get a part of this too. And by liking uh, what we're doing or either sharing it, um, but we're going to go into the Word of God today, and we're going to talk about <clears throat> established in the faith. And I'll go back to Colossians chapter two and verse six, and we're going to read through there. And while y'all are turning, I'm going to pray. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord God, that you've given us this life and this beautiful life that you set a path for us. And Father God, we want to thank you that you've given us all your blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Lord, the access to them through our faith. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. All right. Verse 6, it says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Or... The same way you receive Jesus is the same way you walk in your life of faith. Going on, it says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. And uh, the next verse, we haven't been reading, but I want to read the uh, first part. It says, beware lest anyone cheat you through vain philosophies and empty deceits according to the traditions of men and according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. You can be cheated out of your inheritance with God. Isn't that something? And you know, most people are cheated mostly out of traditions than they are anything else. And then I would say the next thing is, is through the, the, the uh, principles of the world, you know, CNN, Fox News, <laughs> you know, just if you believe most of that stuff on some television, you are in another world because most of it's just it's it's for the agenda that they want to be pushed. But anyhow, going on, I'm not going to talk politics this morning. I prom I promise you, I won't talk politics. Uh, maybe alone together, but we'll do it and have fun. Uh, but it says there in verse uh, seven to be established. In the faith, and that's what we're going to concentrate on today. And um, the first scripture I want you to go to with is with me is Romans chapter four, Romans four, and verse sixteen. Romans four sixteen. And we're going to be talking about faith. Now, one of the things that I, I mean, I am so excited that I learned this years ago, but I learned it, and I've started living by it later in my Christian life more than I do now because I didn't understand it as well as I, as I do. But most folks are really hyper about faith. I mean, most folks, you know, it's like, oh, I'm believing God. Oh, I'm using all the faith I can. Y'all pray I'll get more faith. You know, well, look, you're not going to get any more faith. And your hard praying ain't going to do anything. It's just going to frustrate you because you thinking that you're going to make God, you're going to bend his arm behind his back and make him do what you're wanting him to do. Whenever you really learn about faith, you learn about relaxing. Just let God do the work in his timing and in his way. You know, that's the thing. Most people, want, they got an idea of how it should work. And then they put God in that box, and God's not a God of a box. I can promise you that right now. Look what it says in verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. So that the promise, say promise, promise, might be sure to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, that would be the Jewish people or Israelites, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who, and that's the ones, Abraham was not an Israelite. Did you know that? He was a man of faith. And God told him to do something. And by faith, he did it because he had an expectation of God bringing it to pass. Uh, that's who we are as Gentiles. We, are, we, don't, we, didn't, we weren't of the law. We're of faith. And you came, into G you came to Jesus by faith. If you came to him by the law, you're still destined to hell. <laughs> because you ain't going to get there by the law. All right, again, going to see things uh, in God by the law. But it says also of those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. 
Now, going back in the scriptures, there's a lot of things in here, but I just want to kind of touch on a couple of them. It says, it's got to be by faith. So it can be by grace. Basically, that's what it's saying. The promise is to everybody. Now, here's how it works. I got a promise from God, and I'm just going to settle in on that promise. I'm just going to say, Lord, this is your promise. This is your will. This is your way. This is your desire for my life. And this is the way I accept. I accept that this is true. I just made a positive response to God's promise, to God's grace. Yes, sir. I got a note here that probably comes from you. It's focus on the promise, not the problem. That's right. You focus on the promise, not the problem. And you know, and so if you got your eye on the promise, you got your heart on the promise, you relax in that, you just settle in on it, and you just let God bring it to pass. And you're establishing yourself in the faith or your response to God's uh, promise. It's got to, you, Grace cannot work unless faith is pure and operating in the way it's supposed to be operating. And again, people there's people that there's people that think they understand faith and they think they're living by faith. And you, and usually when you hear somebody say, and then please don't get mad at me, but if they you hear and this is one of those traditions of men, when you hear somebody say, Well, I'm believing God, you know you can almost be assured they're not in faith. <laughs> because if they're believing God, that means that I'm doing my effort to believe God, and I hope he does his part. But what, is, what would a person say? What should a person say? The promise is mine. This is what God said. I believe it. I stand in this. This is what I rest in, and he will bring it to pass in his time and his way. Just trust. I'm just going to trust the Lord. I'm going to leave it to him. I'm going to quit straining and struggling and trying to get it to be done on my efforts. But that's it's, it's important that you can catch this because once you catch it, then you're going to, you're going to enjoy your Christian life. It's a whole lot more fun to have the, the do, just do it this way and have, a, have God bring it to pass in your life. And, and believe me, I'm going to let you know, when I finally did le let go, <laughs> And let God, right? Let go and let God. When I finally did do that, he did it in a way I would have never dreamed to do it. I'll let you know this. I I used to want to be like certain people. I wanted to be like, you know, Kenneth Copeland or somebody like that. And, you know, and what we'd strive to, we'd even start using their accents, you know, when we'd preach and they're talking. You know, we did everything. We were mimicking them to, to the best of our ability. And we thought, well, you know, I could do it. If he could do it, I could do it. Well, let me tell you, I would have never dreamed that God would bring me to the place I am today in my life. I would have never dreamed it. But I'm happier now than I would be if I was having to generate enough money to get a Coliseum <laughs> to bring in four or 5,000 people. I'm going to let you know I'm a happy man. The way it is, so you know, <laughs> let God do it because He knows He knows you better than you know yourself. Let Him do it. Let Him bring it to pass. Now, the next scripture I want to go into is Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one, and everybody can quote this scripture. And and this is the they say the definition of faith, and uh, which I uh, you know is it's a good it's a good verse to help define faith. But the best definition or the best response to saying what faith is is a positive response to God's word or his promises. <clears throat> but look what it says in verse 11, 1, uh, chapter 11, 1 in Hebrews. Now faith is, and I do want to stop right there. Faith is not going to be. Faith is now. I believe in God for it. Well, that's going to be. Faith is now. It is already mine. It already belongs to me. You know, it, it give you a little short example. If you know, if you have a family member and they leave a will and testament, and they say in that will and testament, "Ron, I'm leaving you ten thousand dollars." 
Yeehaw! But I'm gonna leave Vera the I'm gonna leave Vera the other million. So <laughs> Vera says, I got that. Uh, but you know, here's the thing. You're not gonna be running around saying, you know, I believe that Uncle Bill left me ten thousand dollars. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, I'm believing it, I'm believing it. No, you would say, I have ten thousand dollars. It's mine. When is it yours? Now, now. Vera says she's gonna say, "Yeah, but I got the million. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got, I got the million. It's mine. It's mine it's now. Yours. Now, here's the problem. It's not in your bank account yet. You got to go, and you got to go to the right place, and you got to sign the right thing, and you got to have it. They're gonna transfer it. You're not gonna transfer it. They're gonna transfer it into your account. Well, how 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 many of you know? that all the promises of God are yes and amen in him to the glory of God through us in Jesus Christ. It's already there. How do you appropriate it? How do you bring it into the now? If it is now, how do you bring it into your now? Well, look what it says. Now faith is the substance. The promise is the substance of things hope. Four. Now, this word hope is uh, not the English United States <laughs> version of hope where, you know, how, how, how are you going to get your needs met? Well, I'm I sure hope, hope so. so. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I, I ask people, uh, have, have you asked Jesus in your heart? Are you going to go to heaven? I sure hope so. Oh man, you're going to hell. I'm still not there. You're on your way. If it's that way, you're not going to make it. <laughs> right? That's right? Well, this hope, uh, the definition I've have given it and used over the years is a happy expectation of a good thing to come to pass. A happy expectation of a good thing to come to pass. So somebody says, the promise is the substance. The hope for the promise is my expectation of that promise to come to pass in my life. Being mine. I expect it. I have an expectation of it coming to pass. A happy expectation. A happy expectation means I'm not going to let anything get me down. I'm not going to let anything drag me down. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I smell. I don't care what I touch. I don't care what I taste. I'm not letting it change my happy expectation of that good thing to come. Don't care. And if you try, if it keeps on coming at me, I'm going to, I'm going to do something to it to get it out of my way. Right? I'm going to use the word of God and I'm going to fight it with the weapons that are uh, that are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of lies and strongholds. That's a lie. Whenever, whenever you, whenever whatever says against the word of God is not true, that's a lie. One hundred percent of the time, it's a lie. The promise is the truth, and it goes on and says, "Faith is now the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen." Somebody says, "Well, how do you know?" that you're going to get that need met. Well, here, look at it yourself. It's in the Word of God. Look at this promise. Read it. Read it, Read it word for word. Read it out loud. That's what I tell. Read it out loud. I told this one guy I witnessed to this weekend. He, he got back when he asked me some questions and things, and I took him to a scripture, and I said, now read this. And he started reading it silently. I said, no, no, read it out loud. And he read it out loud. And then he saw it better. Read it out loud. This is the evidence. This is the proof that it's mine. This is the evidence. I'm standing in this. I'm standing on this. This is the way it's going to work. So did I explain this a little different than most folks? <laughs> I guess I did. I don't know. Maybe not. You know, I heard the thing about the title deed. You know, faith is the title deed of such a, and which is good on legal terms. But we don't live really on legal terms. We live in reality. And re in reality, you have a promise from God, and the only way you're going to get it is through having it as a now promise and having an expectation of that now promise 
It's yours, and God will, is bringing it to pass. I don't care how long it takes or how it does it. He's bringing it to pass in my life. And you know what? Here's the thing. You can have faith for other people, but if other people shoes <coughs> not to <coughs> correspond with your faith, okay. you're on a up, uphill battle. So that's one of the things you got to, we all have to realize. I mean, with Susan and me, sometimes I'm believing for things that she's not because I see it before she sees it. My prayer for her is that she sees it. You see what I'm saying? I want her to see it because if she sees it and just adds, mixes just a little bit of faith in with my faith, it's going to happen even better. Can, do you see that? If I could just get her to see, and I've had many times, <laughs> I said, we got to see this. She's got to see this, Lord. You showed it to me. It's not my job to make her see it. It's my job to pray she sees it. And God does work in her heart as well as he does mine. And that keeps me away from a lot of arguments. <laughs> A lot of arguments. So anyhow, praying is the best way to do it. Okay. Is this making any sense to you? Hopefully it is. We're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish ourselves in the faith. And when we do that, we're going to see better results. Now go to Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Romans 8, 24. Hey, I hope you guys in Facebook land just loves this. I, I want you to share this with other folks and let them know we're teaching this word of God, and and uh, <clears throat> by liking it, I like for you to go over there and do the like thing and hit the heart to show that you love it, or share it. Share it is very important because it goes on your feed, and people will see it and they'll watch it. But this is very important to us as Christians is to understand our faith. Uh, Romans chapter eight verse twenty four, and we're going to read there. It says, "For we are saved in this hope." Where's, where's it, where are we saved? In the hope. In, in the, let's put Terry's definition with it. We are saved in the happy expectation of the good thing to come to pass. We're saved in that. You, you, what does that mean? That means that we are secure in that. We're secure in that our hope, and hope is a solid thing. It, hope, is, hope is a powerful thing. It's a power if you use it the right way, if you use it the American way, I hope so. I don't know, but maybe you it's not powerful. There's nothing in it. But if you use it the Bible way, I, I, I do expect it to come to pass. I have a happy expectation of it to come to pass. And, and God's going to bring it into my existence in his way. I believe that. I believe he's working on it right now, right now. And so it goes on to say, we are saved in this hope, but hope, that is seen is not hope. For uh, why does anyone still hope for what he sees? So in other words, if if I said, well, you know, I sure hope, I'm hoping for, I'm expecting a phone <laughs> to come into my life. Uh, you know, and I I even name it out, and I got it. You know, it's that's not hope. I already see it. It's mine. It's in my existence. Why should I hope for that? And hope is... Hope is for the things that are not seen, where you don't see it. And, and, and hope is going to bring this faith and this promise into its reality and existence. Hope is the most powerful part of believing God. Somebody says faith is. No, faith is the, e it's the easiest. It's, it, it, can you lay down? Yeah, <laughs> that's like what faith is. I'm just going to lay down and let God do it. Okay, God, I give up to you. I'll just, I'll, you said it, I believe it. Now, the hope comes in. Well, there's a place, it calls it due time. <laughs> How many of you know from the time that you trust God for something, that you're saying, God, I believe this is true, it's mine, it's my promise, to the time it manifests in your life, that's due time. In due time. There's where the hope works. And there's what well, that's the most difficult part of the whole thing, right? Because everything in its existence is trying to tell you it's not going to happen. And everybody around you, too. Everybody around you. People and can destroy your hopes. Even good meaning, well meaning people. Yeah. Even people that are Christians that, you know, they say, well, you know, I'm going to 
believe God with you, but I don't know. I don't think, how in the world can that happen? Mm-hmm. And I don't see it, but it ain't your business to see it. It's my business to see it. It's coming to pass in my life. It's if you can't see it, that's fine. But if you can see it, you just keep your faith tuned in like mine. But, but verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. If we have an expectation of a good thing to come, of the things we do not see, we eagerly wait for it. You see that? This is where you, the key to receiving from God is. This is where the foundation is. This is where everything happens that's going to either make it or break it. Right? So, <clears throat> going on. You know what? Here's the thing. You don't have to struggle with hope. Hope, your greatest, the greatest challenge, the greatest work, the, 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 the labor that you have to put in with hope is keeping all the doubt out. Keeping all the naysayers out. Keeping everything that says it's not going to happen away. Keeping your eye focused in on the hope. Keeping your heart focused in on that hope. And again, I'll say it again. If you've got somebody else's heart involved, the only thing you can pray is that they will see the truth. See it. Every prayer that Paul prayed in Ephesians and Colossians is that, that you would have a, the wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of. I pray you'd have wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of, that you'll be able to see what is the width and the length and the depth and the height of God's love grace and peace towards you through Jesus Christ. I pray you'd see it. Because see, here's the thing. Once you see it, you're going to go for it. The reason people, you could preach a thousand words to a person and they can't hear you, but if you pray that God will show it to them, that they'll see it, that it'll be revealed to them, it's not going to come from the outside in it's going to come from the inside. Everybody in this room that's ever seen anything that they believe God for and it's come to pass, it came in from the inside. Your 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 answer was like, ooh, ooh I see that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know there's many, many times the preacher preaching it, and all of a sudden they'll say just one or two words and, I, and God starts speaking in my heart. I know everybody else has had that. You start speaking in your heart and you and it's like, you know, riding down the road and, and you and all of a sudden you realize I drove how far did I drive without realizing I'm driving? You ever done that? Well, that's the way it is with you know, hearing God in a service. You'll hear him and the next thing you know, you're thinking about what he's saying and what he and God's ministering to you, and then you look up and you think, Oh, I missed half what the preacher was saying. What's he? But it doesn't really matter because God was speaking to you. That's what matters. Everything comes from the inside out. We don't work from the outside in. And so that's why we pray, Lord, I pray that you'd give him a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you that he would know what is the width and the length and the depth of the height of your love and your grace. You know, just keep praying that. That's your greatest prayer. You know, um, and, you know, you can pray over them in many ways, and, and God hears our prayers and he answers them. And, but when another person's will is involved, please believe me, it's... Uh, um, it's, they need to have revelation. Need to have revelation. I, let me share with you a story. I was a pastor in a church in a small town, and and it was a country town, boy, country people. And, uh, they, <laughs> and these are real country people, I'm telling you. But anyhow, one of them called me up and said, she's the aunt of this little girl who had a brain tumor and she was you know in a coma and and she was in the hospital over at university and would I go pray for him and I didn't know anybody there and and she wasn't going to go with with us and so I said yeah so I went over walked in and mom and daddy were sitting in there with a the little girl and she was laying there you know with no response at all 
<clears throat> you know, all tubed up and everything. And, and then uh, I asked them, I said, well, what's going on? They said, well, she's got a brain tumor. It's just swollen so big that, you know, her uh, Mickey's, Mickey, Minnie Mouse is talking to her. But anyhow, <laughs> she swelled up so big that it's kind of put her into a coma. And um, and so I said, would you, I said, would you look to the husband? Because the men are the authority in the house, right? They're the priests of the house. So I looked at him and I said, well, would you, would you mind if I pray for her? Because I, I believe that God will heal her if you give me permission to pray for her. And he did. And, uh, and so that's all I needed. I didn't need anything else. Her, her will didn't matter because she's a child. It's a big, it's, it's, it's a, he was the authority over her. But he gave me just a little bit of a door. And I went over there and laid on, my hands on her. And I just prayed a simple prayer. Lord, I want to thank you that you are the healer of this little girl. And the Lord God, this tumor has to go in Jesus' name. It has to shrink and go in the name of Jesus. I pray your healing power be over her in Jesus' name. Well, then I talked to him for a few more minutes, and then I left. <clears throat> and I got home. And I, I, I mean, it was like it take, took me about 35, 40 minutes to get home. I got home, phone rang. Back then we didn't have cell phones. The phone rang, and it was the aunt. And she says, you won't believe it. You just won't believe it. I said, believe what? She said, the little girl woke up. And the first thing she said, I want some McDonald's french fries. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had that person's will. I had that father's will to go toward that promise, right? Well, here's what's really crazy. This the this tumor started shrinking. They took x-rays and things the next day, and they said the tumor is shrinking. And I I got excited. I thought, man, praise God. And then that afternoon, I get a phone call from another redneck country girl. She wasn't a happy girl. She was cussing me. And she was saying, if you don't take that curse or whatever you put on that girl off, I'm going to come and we're going to and it wasn't a nice thing they was going to do. And I said, I didn't put a curse on her. I said, I just prayed that God would heal her. Well, you've cursed the family because they've been going through this thing for years, and their hope was that she would die quickly so they wouldn't have to go through it anymore. And I got there, and I, thought, I said, well, ma'am, I'm not going to take anything off of nothing. I said, the little girl... It was prayed for in the name of Jesus, and I'm not going to take that away. And she's and they just came after me. <laughs> I had to go to the police station. <laughs> but here's what happened: the little girl, the tumor started growing again, and she passed away a few days later. They stole her hope from her. They got what well, they wanted. Didn't they? So, so here's the thing: I had their, I had their will. The if ugly aunt hadn't come in the picture. More likely, the little girl be alive today. But I had their will. That's all I needed. My faith was applied to it. My expectation was applied to it. And she was healed. And the tumor, tumor was shrinking. But something else came in and convinced Daddy that they, that's not what you want. Now, that's what will happen to you and me, too. This is why hope in that period of time is really important in trusting God. This, this, the faith of asking is important, but it ain't nowhere near as important as the hope that period of time that you're going to be standing on that promise and in that promise. And that everything you is going to come against what you're trusting God for. And you got to fight against it. And, you know, that don't mean you got to be loud, belligerent. That don't mean you got to, you know, when somebody says something, when you walk up to somebody at church and, and they say something that's negative toward what you're believing for, you know, you don't rebuke them and <laughs> call them down. You just say, smile at them, and you walk away and say, it ain't going to happen in my life. <laughs> no, oh, my God, it is mine in the name of Jesus. I have, I've done that many, many times, many times. All right, let's go to another scripture. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Hallelujah. I, I hope you're all getting something out of this. 
this is <laughs> this is uh this is the real thing you know this is where you, this is where we really live if, if you're gonna really be a christian how many of you hope that you're gonna get to heaven uh, you, do you have a happy expectation of it or just hope maybe y'all will get there no i have i'm excited about going to heaven somebody i'm i'm there you know it, it, i'm as far as i'm concerned it's mine already i can walk through the gates you know, and have it will be no problem with me because I'm gonna walk in there, and it's gonna be a blessed thing. I, I have that expectation for that. Look what it says in verse 18 of Second Corinthians chapter four. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, we have to look at something. We're not looking at the things that are seen, the things that's in the natural. We're looking at things that aren't seen or that's not in the natural, which would be what? The promise of God. The promise is the key to your hope, but the hope is the key for it to come into pass. I'm not looking for it. For the things which are seen are temporal. They can be changed. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Think about it now. The disease is temporal. If you look at it as a permanent thing till death do you part, <laughs> you're going to die. You're going to die from her. That's where doctors come in and start saying it's remission. It's not healed. It's yeah. just remission. Yeah. Yeah. They, they want it to be eternal because, you know, they don't have an answer for it going away. Right. But anyhow, but that's a temporal thing. It's temporal. The permanent thing, the eternal thing, is the Word of God, the promise of the Word of God. And listen, if you understand that the Word of God is what created all things, and all things are sustained and held together by the Word of God, the Word of God is the most powerful thing in existence, period. It's the most powerful thing there is. But here's the problem. Most Christians don't believe that. They believe that there's something else more powerful. And, uh, in, in, and what's really sad is <clears throat> the thing that one person can believe and trust God with, they can stand in that promise and trust God with and have an expectation for it to come to pass, get healed. And another person with the exact same thing looks at it as something that's going to bring them to their death and they die. Seen it many a times, seen it many a times. And, and um, the most amazing thing is, is I've seen people, I've seen them, Susan's seen them, <clears throat> where they go to the doctor with this little pain right here in the side, you know, just, and the doctor does an exam, then they send them to the hospital and say, you got the uh, stage four cancer and the such and such. And they go from this nice little chunky, <laughs> healthy looking person and then just in months pruned up to nothing yeah. Yeah. and you get me and then you you say well why why did that happen why did they just all of a sudden just that quick it's just so quick people say it's just so quick that's what they were believing yeah. for you if you if you were there with them 24 hours <clears throat> you would have heard them say i believe i'm dying but you would have heard them say things toward that. I actually, <clears throat> we, <clears throat> but then we've seen people that had stage four cancer and they trust the Lord and they still alive. Uh -huh. right? right? What's the difference? One of them says, I am not going to submit to it. Yeah, I'm going to submit to God's to word. I'm going to let him be the, the one that I submit to. I'm going to be, he, his promises are what I'm going to stand in. I'm going to live in that promise and I'm not going to, move um and so it's 9 50 what time are we supposed to stop 10 o'clock <clears throat> what 10, 10. <clears throat> 10. <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> give me just a drink here so <clears throat> going on to the next scripture y'all ready all righty romans chapter 1 verse 16 to 17 i love this scripture I love a lot of scripture. I love this one too. <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. 
Matt Washington says I'm here. Hey, Matt. <clears throat> Look what it says. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God for healing, deliverance, salvation, get your needs met for everyone who what? Believe. Believes. From the Jew first to the Greek. So what's the power of God? The power of God is the gospel. What's the gospel? What Jesus did to give us all the promises, make all the promises ours. As the good news is, is healing yours. Amen. The good news is God meeting your finances is yours. The good news is deliverance is yours. The good news is you have peace, the peace of God which passes all understanding. That is the power of God. The power of God is what he has given to you and promised. So what, what am I saying? I'm saying this. You want God's power? Get his gospel promise and stand in it. To those who believe, to those who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. It you're says gonna, you're not going to believe if you're not reading it. Well, you got it. You got it again. It's going to come from the inside out. You can read it, and until it comes into you, and it comes out of you from the Bible says from the heart. By the heart, man believes. With the mouth's confessions, man of salvation. Verse seventeen: For in it the righteousness of God is revealed in it, in what? In the gospel or in the power of the gospel, the righteousness of God, God's righteousness is revealed in it through from faith to faith. For it is written, the just shall live by faith. I'm living by faith. Let me, how many of you are living by oxygen in here? Anybody living by oxygen? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody. I'm the only one living. Look, you you live by oxygen. You breathe it. You live by faith. Faith should not be a hard thing. Faith is a positive response to God's promise. I'm gonna live by faith. I'm gonna live by every promise of God. Once I see the promise and I understand it's mine, nothing's gonna tell me any different. Even if I get sick, and let me tell you, don't think because you're believing this that the devil don't want to won't attack you. And don't believe that you won't have troubles come in your life because you will. <laughs> Somebody says, I don't believe that. I don't want. Well, just don't believe that. But Jesus said it himself. He says, as long as you're in this world, you'll have tribulation. Sometimes the closer to God you are, the harder you get hit. Because the devil knows it and he's trying to turn you. Yep. <clears throat> but you know what? We have the victory. This is the victory that overcomes our faith. That's what it says. So we're going to take the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, put it into our life, stand upon it, and let it be the power that brings it to pass. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it. It's, and so I live by it. I, I don't have a problem breathing oxygen. I don't have a problem believing the promise of God. I don't have a problem believing it. I have a problem with what's trying to keep me from believing it. You do what I hear you hear what I just said? I don't have a problem believing it. I have a problem of what's trying to keep me from believing it. So that's my problem, and that's what I'm going to deal with. That's what I'm going to get rid of. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. We got time for one more scripture, probably. Let's go. <clears throat> to Romans 10, 17. Everybody can, can quote the scripture. If you don't know the address, at least you know what it, how to quote it. It says, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And that, hey, listen, let me explain to you some ways I've heard this scripture interpreted. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And I've heard people say, well, you go and you hear a preacher, and faith will come. And <laughs> get rid of that one. <laughs> Scratch. Now I heard people say, if you, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and if you speak the word of God out of your mouth, you'll hear it, and faith will come. Again, <laughs> scratch that off. 
Faith comes by hearing, not by these ears, but by these ears, the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Are God speaking to your heart? That's what I'm saying. He can't speak to your heart unless you be still. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can go to church and you get still and you hear God speaking to your heart and you and the preacher keeps on preaching. That's because you're still. I when I all my life, I had whenever it was just cassette tape players, cassette tapes, I had a cassette tape player that I wired to where I had a big speaker and I put that thing up as loud as I could get it out in the construction field. I had people get mad at me. I don't want to listen to that blank, blank preaching. I said, well, you, look, as long as you're here with me, it's going to be playing. I wore tapes out. I wore out tape players. I, you know, I'd get, they'd get clogged up in there and I'd take my time and pull out the thing and try and straighten it up. <laughs> you ever done that? Yeah. And, but here's the thing. I was listening to the word of God all the time, all the time, all the time. But I'll notice as long as I'm working and I'm busy and I'm concentrating on my work, I really, I heard words, but I didn't hear the word. Then I go eat lunch. I sit down and open my Bible. And I start to read. And I start hearing something in here. You hear what I'm saying now? I start hearing something in here. And I, it became powerful. That became powerful in here. Because I was, what I was doing is I was taking the scriptures that the guy was teaching. And I was just reading them. And I started hearing the word of God, God's word speaking in me. That's where the faith comes from. So faith is not hard. I've got to put myself in the position to where I can hear God's word speaking into my heart. Once that happens, I faith is activated in a way that it can't be taken away from you. Your hope can be stolen, but your faith won't. Hear what I'm saying? If you don't have, you can have faith and a damaged hope, and you're not going to receive from God. You can have faith, but damaged hope. And that's where people say, well, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. They're, what they're saying is, is I understand, and I got it in my heart, that this is what God wants, but I'm not really sure how he's going to bring it past or what he's going to do. And such, such says this, and such, such said that. And, you know, I ain't mean to die from this. And, you know, all that's damaging your hope, your expectation. That's where your battle is. So, <clears throat> anyway, just kind of slide down a little bit or either go to verse 10. It says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the heart. Where's the heart? It's right in here. Not here. It's in here. With the heart, man believes. <clears throat> How are you going to believe with the heart? Hearing God's word in your heart. Hearing God's word inside of there. Man, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the what? Mouth. Confessions made unto salvation. So in other words, if you've got things coming against your hope, you, 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 you can't be quiet. <laughs> if you do, you're going to be defeated. You got to speak out. No, this is what I believe. No, this is what I believe. No, that's what I believe. Now, of course, don't be belligerent. Don't be loud. Don't hurt nobody's feelings. Somebody says something, just let them walk away, and then you deal with the devil who is behind all that. Okay? But that's what you got to do. <clears throat> Father, thank you for this word. Love you, Lord. Love you that you made it so simple for us. But, Lord God, the wise, uh, the wise, w wise of this world, the ones who think they have wisdom, is missing it all together because they think it's all about them. But Lord, it is all about you, and it's all about what you've given us, and it's all about how you've developed us, and it's all about how you've given us your promises and your faith and your love and your goodness. And Lord, for us to rest in you, and Lord, you, the only place in the New Testament says the labor is the labor to enter into that rest. And Lord. That means we're going to fight against that which keeps us from trying to get there. Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.
But God bless you guys in Facebook. Please share this. Please like it. And I love the little heart thing. Go up, push the heart. And I'll talk to you later. And God bless you. Harry, you know all the construction guys, they wasn't listening to that. No.